This is a chapter that's going to probably go down as a defining moment for Endeavor as a character. A few chapters ago, he stated that if you are not quick enough, people die. It's not about failing a test. It's not about, you know, being able to make that grade or make it to class, etc. It isn't training. If you do not save this individual, if you don't make it in time before, let's say, a car hits them, it's over. There is no coming back. There is no reduce. It is life or death. Lives are at risk. And this is a lesson that Endeavor himself wanted to convey to Bakugo, Todoroki, and Izuku. He wanted to make sure they were fully aware of this. And this is something that's obviously common sense, but it still needs to be stated because at the end of the day, they are kids that are in school and really understanding the fact that when they're really out on the field, there is no longer second chances. Failure literally means death for people. There is no coming back from that. So that is the point here, is that this chapter is very significant for the very fact that Endeavor did the very thing he told the kids not to do. He froze. He froze up. He didn't move. He literally stood in place as the kids flew past him. And it wasn't because they were faster than him. It was because Endeavor mentally, he froze. And it's very important because there's so much emotion that is put into those quick panels with Endeavor that really speaks so much about his character without even giving us words. And I just want to talk about that first before I get anything else because it's so fantastic with how Horikoshi handled that because there were so many different ways that this chapter can go and I talked about this already in my previous chapter review that there is just no way Endeavor was going to be able to do something he was in a bad situation and I'm very very pleased that at the end of the day Endeavor was not capable of doing anything he did make a decision but he didn't save his son, he didn't cop out and save both of them, it wasn't him really doing the act necessarily, and everything from this arc has been built up for this very moment, but there was a lot of significance on it that didn't make it feel very cliche or forced, and it felt very natural, especially when you look at what each individual character did throughout this chapter, but once again, let me get into Endeavor first. So, Endeavor... He notices when Bakugo rushes out of the car, that ending gets off balance, and in that quick little brief interval, Endeavor could have rushed in to save his child, and he was going to do that. But as soon as he was rushing in to save Natsu, his son, he looked at his son's face. We don't really know exactly what Endeavor was thinking in that moment. It was not clarified whatsoever. That is left up for speculation, and I do hope that we do get some clarification to that going forward but the point is soon as Endeavor laid eyes on his son and he saw his son's terrified face he's wrapped up in these like bandages that are from the road etc that ending is using Endeavor stops in his very place there is a very significant panel that shows Endeavor just literally standing there he just stands there and then you see the kids just rush on past him as he's just standing there he freezes because of multiple reasons most likely Number one that I could think of, it's his son, his son's in peril, and he realizes that one wrong move, his son is dead. Not by ending, but also himself, because Endeavor's quirk is very dangerous. When you think about Endeavor's quirk, he's someone that uses fire. And if you know anything about Natsu, a little bit trivia of his character, apparently he is very weak against the summer heat. So most likely, because of that, Endeavor would really injure Natsu if he was to try to use his quirk around him. So because of that very point, Endeavor could have froze because of multiple reasons. His son was in danger, and he lost confidence within himself. Actually, that is definitely something that did happen. He did lose confidence in himself. Endeavor lost confidence in his ability to save his son. He froze up, and he could not do anything. And if, let's say, the boys were not there, his son would have died. His son would have died. That is just enough for us to know what the decision was made. Basically, it was something I didn't expect. Endeavor either, either a sacrificing, like, ending to save a son, or trying to save both in the, in the course of losing both of them, but instead, Endeavor was willing to just probably let himself get killed, but also not doing anything for his son because he froze up, because at the end of the day, he is a father, and that was his son. And you could say whatever you want about Endeavor, say he's a scumbag, he's a terrible person, etc., 
but it's very clear after this chapter there is a lot of emotion within him especially for his son for him to freeze up like he did because he he lost confidence he lost confidence within himself to be able to get the job done he was not quick enough to be able to process what he needed to do which is why Bakugo, Todoroki, and Izuku were very vital within this chapter and in those final moments of the chapter when you see Bakugo and Natsu being gripped by Endeavor like he's hugging them we don't really get to see once again anything he's thinking but it's very clear that there's a couple of things he could be thinking that's either relief that his son is safe and you know the kids are safe as well nobody died in that moment or maybe he's just you know he was just so shocked that he just on instinct moved that like that whatever the case may be Endeavor really showed a lot of growth he showed a lot of differences I don't think anyone really expected from his character from the very beginning when we were first introduced to him. He's completely different now, especially with just seeing how he acted within the chapter. But okay, let's, let's get into the boys. The boys demonstrated something that I think everybody is going to fall in love with. Once again, if you are a big fan of Bakugo, Todoroki, and Izuku, you're going to love this chapter. And if you love character development and characterization that Horikoshi has carefully been crafting for these three characters, then you're going to enjoy this chapter even more. Because you get to see every individual character, Izuku, Todoroki, and Bakugo, show their development in their own way what they have been working on while in this like internship with endeavor but also what they've been working on since kind of the beginning of the story since they realized that they weren't perfect that there was so much they needed to work on and so let's get into the first one let's get into bakugo since he was the first one to charge out of the vehicle i think it's fitting that he is the one that is talked about first when the chapter begins, you literally see Bakugo break out of the car. He's launching himself at blinding speed, and if you look at the way his face is, it speaks so much without words. You can see the absolute look of distress, anxiety, and how he needs to get this done as quickly as possible on his face. There is so many emotions you can read off of Bakugo as he is literally charging ending and if you look at let's say the beginning of the story of Bakugo before he got all this character development Bakugo would have charged ending and tried to fight him that's what Bakugo would have done because that was the type of person he was he would have picked a fight with ending and tried to fight him and he wouldn't have really been on rescue duty with Natsu try to save him etc or save the people that were in the cars he would have tried to fight ending but there was a very big difference with this Bakugo Bakugo charged out of the car and instead of even fighting ending he he went for Natsu. He saved Natsu, grabbed him with blinding speed, concentrated his power to go super fast, grabbed him, and saved him from a car. Which is something that Endeavor was trying to relay in his mind. Like, once again, if you make a mistake, you're not fast enough, people die. And that's kind of what was on, probably on Bakugo's mind. He realized if he was not quick enough, Natsu was dead right then and there. And so the distress in his face is just truly astonishing. And he saves someone. If you, like I said, you think about the beginning Bakugo, he would never have been more focused on saving someone instead of fighting, but instead he did save someone over fighting, and he left it to the other two. He left it to Todoroki to actually do the finishing blow, which let's get into Todoroki next. So Todoroki... He was the second out. He was the second one out, and he was the one that was focused on saving his brother. He used his father's technique, his fire side, to be able to rush over to ending and save his brother without really doing physical harm to his brother from what we can see. And he was able to actually utilize close range combat, which is something that he struggled to do since the very beginning. Now, one of the big flaws that we found out from, you know, Todoroki is that he relies heavily on his quirk and he doesn't really rely on his combat. He may be good with his eyesight, but he needs to really focus on how to use close hand combat, etc. And you can see from this chapter, he uses a close range attack to be able to bring down ending. He doesn't use long range, he actually closes the gap and gets near the man to use a close range attack to be able to bring the man down but also to make sure he could save his brother too to get him out of that situation it once again shows growth of Todoroki of how he was able to get there that quickly use his fire side like that and throw aside his anger towards his father to be a hero to use every tool at his disposal to win 
Then we move over into Izuku. Izuku is the last one out, which, in all honesty, I think this is going to come out as a shock, but it also makes sense, too, when you think about what Izuku did within the chapter. He focused on saving the innocent, saving the people that were in the cars that were going to crash and probably hurt all of them or even kill all of them. He rushed out of the car, and he instantly threw the hero, like, you know, briefcases all at the people that were initiating in combat. For instance, Bakugo and Todoroki. And I like in that brief exchange when, you know, Izuku threw them, the briefcases at those two, you have it to where Todoroki grabs it, he looks at Izuku, and, you know, they continue forward, they instantly put it on, and you see Bakugo, he doesn't even look back. He does not even look back at Izuku. He just grabs it. He puts his hand back and he grabs it. It's like he expected Izuku to be there and instantly grab that briefcase to put it on. And if there was any time delay at all between Izuku and Bakugo, there would have been a death. So that's a big point of that as well, is that there was clean teamwork. Teamwork is something that was truly important within this fight, within this chapter. If it wasn't for really clean teamwork, one wrong thing could have easily have killed anyone there. For instance, let's look back at, once again, the development between Bakugo and Todoroki. You know, remember, there was really no teamwork between them at all when they were in, like, the exam, the hero exam. They really messed up. They were not able to work together whatsoever, which led to people potentially being able to die. So, because of that entire moment, we see within this chapter that they've learned teamwork, and even Bakugo is teamworking with Izuku to get the job done. There is just amazing teamwork being displayed that I appreciate appreciate that so much, but just the amount of trust that Bakugo must have had to grab that briefcase without even looking at Izuku says so much. But back into Izuku though, he uses his second quirk, Black Whip, to be able to save the innocents. Now, let's be honest here. We all knew that Izuku was going to be able to probably progress Black Whip probably within this arc. I mean, it was all building up towards that. It made sense because he has a lot more quirks that he needs to, you know, work towards before, you know, he has complete mastery of one for all. So I definitely saw Black Whip getting kind of somewhat mastered within this arc. It may not be fully mastered, but it's definitely a step forward. And you can see that Izuku is able to use his Black Whip in a way to be able to actually you know, stop the cars from moving around and causing injuries to the people inside of it, and it really does look a lot like Spider-Man. Now, what makes this very relevant, why I'm mentioning Spider-Man, is that if you're aware, Horikoshi, the writer of My Hero Academia, is a big fan of Spider-Man. He absolutely adores Spider-Man. And so it kind of makes sense that he would use something that looks very similar to Spider-Man, like Black Whip on Izuku, to save cars like that. It looks like something out of a Spider-Man comic or movie. So I appreciate these little, you know, details that he threw in there. But I think that's about it. It's a good chapter to really just display the teamwork, the amount of growth each individual character had, how Endeavor is as a character. It's just a fantastic chapter. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever I upload a video, please click the bell icon down below. And with that, she be out.